If you have a burned outlet or burn receptacle in your house like this one here, there are three common reasons why this could be happening in your home. So I'm gonna talk about those reasons and what you can do to prevent this from happening in the future. The first common issue is something called arcing. And arcing occurs typically if the wires loosen up on the receptacle over time. So what happens is the wires will get loose and they'll start to touch other surfaces that they're not supposed to, and this can cause an electrical arc or sparking to occur. And as you know, you could probably imagine, this can not only cause the electrical outlet to melt or become damaged, but it can also cause house fires. So if you start to see any signs of burn marks on your receptacles or your electrical outlets, make sure you take care of those right away because you don't want the problem to get a lot worse potentially. One of the most common ways a wire will loosen up is through a practice called backstabbing. So I've got an example here. This is actually a receptacle that's been backstabbed. You can see the wires poking in the back here. Um, the alternative option is to install the wires on these side terminals, which is tightened down by a screw, the wires underneath the screw. But on the backstab method, basically the only thing holding the wires in place is a tiny clip inside of the receptacle. Now, as you use the receptacle over time, you plug things in, you take things out repeatedly over a number of years, that clip can tend to loosen up because this receptacle is gonna be moving back and forth in the, in the outlet box over time. So when you're going to replace the receptacle, make sure you don't use the back stab method. Make sure you use the side terminals or use another process called back wiring. And I'll talk about that here in a second. Another common reason for this is if the wiring is undersized for the circuit. So for example, uh, if you look at a garage, garages typically need heavier gauge wire because you typically plug bigger, larger things in, in a garage like motors for like air compressors and things like that. So this is gonna draw more electricity. And if you don't have the right size wiring installed, it's gonna cause a uh, heat buildup because that appliance or that item is gonna try and draw more energy than the wiring is designed to handle. So if you end up adding additional receptacles, make sure you're using the right gauge wire so you don't have this problem going forward. The third reason is probably the most common and that is simply that the circuit is overloaded. Now this can happen really easily because typically on a circuit you have multiple receptacles in a room or in multiple rooms and the more things that you have plugged in to these outlets, the more energy is gonna be drawn. Uh, it's also really common in say summer months or winter months when you have auxiliary heating and cooling devices plugged in. So maybe you have a portable air conditioner that you're plugging in, or if you have a, a portable space heater that you're plugging in, these tend to draw a lot of energy and a lot of power. So if you have this plugged in on one circuit in addition to other things like maybe a computer or TVs, things like that, then that circuit is probably gonna be drawing too much energy for everything to be able to be serviced in the right way. So if you're gonna have a lot of things plugged into a single circuit, or if you're gonna have you know, large things plugged into a circuit, like a space heater or something like that, make sure you limit the number of devices plugged into the circuit. Try to spread the load out over multiple circuits if possible. Plugging things into multiple circuits are going to help alleviate this issue and not cause this problem in the future. Now it's important that before you change out the receptacle, you understand what actually caused the problem because you don't want this to happen again. If it's something as simple as the wires loosened up because it was a backstabbed receptacle, then the simple fix is to replace it with a new receptacle and then you know use the side terminal wires. But if it's something more significant, like the wires aren't sized appropriately for that space, then you're gonna want to address the bigger issue rather than just fixing the burn receptacle because that's just a symptom of a larger problem. When you're replacing a receptacle, you wanna make sure that all the wire inside the box is sound. So if you have any wire that's damaged where like the insulation is burned, you wanna be sure to cut that off before you end up stripping the wire and using that to install the new receptacle. If the wire ends up being too short, you can always extend that with a pigtail connection and a spare piece of wire. You can either use wire nuts or wire levers for this. These will both do the job just fine. Also, instead of replacing it with another residential grade receptacle that can be backstabbed, consider replacing it with a commercial or a spec grade receptacle because these are built to be a lot heavier duty. These won't wear out as fast. So as you're plugging things into a receptacle and taking them out, there are a lot heavier duty springs to hold the plugs in place. And they have the advantage of being able to be back wired. So instead of the backstab method where it's just a little clip that holds the wire into the back of the receptacle. The back wire method actually uses a clamp and it uses those same side terminals to tighten the wire down. So this will make the job a lot faster and it will give you that safe connection that you're looking for. Now, whatever receptacle you end up replacing the burn one with, you just wanna make sure that it's meeting all of the codes in your area. So not only the national uh, electric code, but also there might be local codes that apply to you. So you wanna make sure you know what those are before you purchase just any receptacle at the store and replace it in your house. You wanna make sure that everything's safe, everything's up to code, and that everything will be fine moving forward. All right, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.